My name is Chris, though you might recognize my voice from another channel called Stohov, where I do various tutorial videos for Fantasy Grounds Unity. In collaboration with Smiteworks, I'm going to explain how creating the custom lineage within Fantasy Grounds Unity's character wizard works. The custom lineage was introduced with Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, and this changed how you could create your character by also adding a customizable race to the process. Until that time, each time you, as a player, were deciding what kind of character to play, there was a limited number of races provided by various supplements, and it came down to the best fit in relation to what you had in mind for your character. The custom lineage changes that, as it gives you the options to define the various traits that will be used to make up all of the racial aspects of your character. And in this video, I will explain how you can create that custom lineage from within the character wizard and go into detail about the various issues you might run into in the process. Before I explain how to create a custom lineage in the character wizard, I must explain what the custom lineage is and dispel a few misconceptions right from the start. In 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons, a custom lineage is made up of a number of specific traits that when combined create a unique racial history for your character, including their appearance. There are some restrictions that do exist, but they are relatively minimal and are clearly defined by the Tasha's Cauldron of Everything supplement under the Customizing Your Origin section of the Character's Options chapter. To get access to that, you're going to want to go to the reference manual for Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. And then you will want to expand the table of contents here on the left and choose customizing your origin. Once you've done that, scroll down the page until you get to this purple box, and this is going to define your custom lineage. As you can see, there are seven traits that you can customize from the creature type through to the languages that your character is going to be able to speak. However, when it comes to the creature type, the race itself must be of the humanoid type as the basis for your character, but all other aspects of that are customizable. And while the intent was to allow you to create a race that was more or less a derivative of many of the other existing races within 5th edition, this is not really meant as a strict guideline, as many dungeon masters will give you a little bit of free reign to create really what you would like here, as long as it still falls under the humanoid type. And through this, you'll be able to define your character's size, be it medium or small in stature, and regardless of your character's size, you'll have a movement speed of 30. Other aspects that you can customize are related to the plus two bonus for any one ability score of your character, a feat, the choice between dark vision or proficiency in a single skill, and finally, an additional language, as your character will already know the common language. Anyone who is paying attention might realize that there is no plus one bonus that a race typically gets, and this is true. However, the feat replaces that concept, as many of the feats that you can choose and select from contain the option of a plus one bonus to an ability score of your choice so the implied bonus is not really that big of a loss. The custom lineage, when running through the character creation process, is created within the races panel, and it is right here in the middle of the list, although I've gone ahead and made sure that, once again, all of my particular available races are loaded so that you can see how full this can get. And it's really there to give you an idea of where you will need to look to see the custom lineage button. There is an information sheet that you can use as a guide, and all you have to do is simply click on this particular link icon here, and it will pop open the information sheet, which you'll be able to use to see all of the details about how to create a custom lineage for your character. However, once you've chosen to go with the custom lineage option here, you'll see that this particular menu selection changes as well as the quote unquote task list updates in order to go through and tell you what you have left to do. In relation to the racial modifiers, the options that are represented here are a little bit misleading. And while Smiteworks is working on a solution for this, it's not quite yet ready, at least at the time of this recording. As we discussed earlier, your character is only able to receive a plus two modifier to any of your ability scores. But this selection still refers to the default options and the alternatives that come through Tasha's Cauldron of Everything and option two, which allows you to choose three particular ability scores and modify them by one point each. None of that is valid for the custom lineage. In this case, the default option is what you'll want to choose, and that's because it's the only one that is actually properly set up to allow you to select the ability score that you want to add plus two to. Now, in this case, I'm just going to randomly choose strength for the time being, just so that we can continue to move forward. 
The variable trait is relatively straightforward, as it allows you to either choose dark vision for your character or a skill proficiency that you can then choose to be become proficient in. If you choose the skill proficiency, a new option pops up down here that allows you to select the skill that you want to become proficient in. Really, it's entirely up to you, and you're not locked in until you actually hit commit for your character sheet, because you can then just decide to switch it back to dark vision, and you'll see that any traits that you had chosen here will go away. So if I go down here and I select intimidation, for example, and then I go, no, I really want dark vision, you'll see that it goes away. The remaining selection should also be fairly straightforward in that you can choose your character's second language as well as their character size. And if you've not already done it, go ahead and select the modifier here or the proficiency. Now, I've just realized actually that even though I've now got dark vision up here, this proficiency is still here. So this is something that's probably going to get cleaned up once all of the other stuff is done for the custom lineage. We'll have to check to see if when I go through and create our character, if that actually does get added as a skill proficiency. Now, I'm going to quickly go ahead and select the size, and I'm going to go and choose uh, Elvish for my second language for the time being. And as you can see, this will complete everything specific to the actual race, except for one final thing. We still have to deal with a feat which hasn't yet popped up. In order to do that, you're going to want to go ahead and select your class first. And just for kicks, I'm going to select a wizard for this case. And as soon as you select your class, that's when that feats tab is going to pop up. And we'll get to that in a second. I'm just going to go ahead and finish selecting everything specific to my class and my background. And then I will bring you to the feat section just so that I can go through and commit this character once I'm done. And we'll see if that issue has arisen with the intimidation skill. As I said earlier, the feats button isn't really going to appear until you've clicked on the specific class. So it's best to have what class in mind you want to take before you actually go through the process of creating your custom lineage just so that you're happy with the end result, so that when you choose a feat, you can select one that is going to suit your class and the subclass that you intend to take. I highly recommend that before you finalize the class options, like I've already done, you jump to the feats panel and review and select a feat that you think is going to work best with your class, and what you have in mind for your character. One thing I want to point out, though, is that there are feats here that do have restrictions in place, and specifically some are racial, some are level, some are class. The Bountiful Luck feature, for example, requires you to be a halfling, normally. Because you're creating a custom lineage-based character, you do have the freedom to select this if you want, which is why I've chosen it here for this example. Because the restriction is not really applicable to your particular race, this means that you can select any feat for your character regardless of if it has a racial restriction prerequisite in relation to that particular feat. However, other prerequisites, such as level requirements, class restrictions, or minimum ability score requirements, would still apply. And once you've selected your feat, it should be safe to finalize the rest of your options for your character, specifically their class, their background, any inventory and spells that you're going to want to select before you actually go ahead and commit your character. To understand how the rest of the character creation process works, I recommend reviewing the two previous videos that cover how to create non-spellcasting and spellcasting-based characters which I'll link in the description below, as they walk you through the full process. And after creating my character, I have confirmed that the intimidation skill did not get chosen for proficiency, so we're good in relation to that process. So it's just a visual glitch that is showing up in the character creation process, so don't get fooled by it. The introduction of the custom lineage through Tasha's Cauldron of Everything has added a bit of complexity to the character creation process, but it really does enhance the creative options that are now available to you. With the character wizard now able to handle the creation process of the custom lineage as part of that whole build out, it makes the whole process far easier than it has been thus far. I want to thank you for watching this video on behalf of Smiteworks and myself. I also want to thank Smiteworks for providing me the opportunity to present this information on their channel, and I look forward to continuing with our collaboration. Please click on the like button if you found the information in this video useful to helping you learn how to use Fantasy Grounds Unity and consider subscribing to the Smiteworks Fantasy Grounds YouTube channel to keep up to date with new content as it is released. If you have any questions or comments about this video, feel free to post them in the comment section of the video below for others to see and contribute to the discussion.